There are only two bowlers in the history of Test cricket who've taken all ten wickets in an innings, and one of them is my guest today. But that's not his only record. He's the only spin bowler to have taken five wickets in an innings against all the major test playing sides. And in 1994, he took six wickets against the West Indies for just 12 runs. So what's the secret of his phenomenal success? Well, stick with me as I talk to Anil Kumble, and let's see if he tells us. Welcome to the program, Anil. Thank you, thank you. Tom. I gather there is still one ambition of yours that isn't fulfilled, am I right? Yes, uh, I've come close to that a lot of times. Uh, I haven't achieved a hat-trick in test cricket. Uh, I've done that uh, at the first class level, uh, playing for Karnataka. I've done it twice. But I've been uh, on that uh, hat-trick ball a lot of times in my career in test cricket, but still but that haven't. extra little bit of luck hasn't happened. But I, think, uh, I, I was on... Uh, I was twice on a hat-trick uh, in my Delhi test match against Pakistan during the 10-wicket uh, haul. But I don't think uh, you can ask for more than uh, 10 wickets in an innings. And, and I don't think you, know, you, you would get uh, a hat-trick under 10 wickets in an innings. I think that's asking for too much. You know, you're absolutely right. You can't ask for more. But I gather a hat-trick is something that your mother is absolutely dreaming for you to do. Isn't that right? Yeah, every time, uh, you know, whenever I call before a match, uh, uh, she, the first thing she says is, you know, you should take a hat-trick today, but I think for her probably hat-trick is really easy and it comes off. But, uh, but I think, you know, that'll, that'll come. I mean, you know, if, it's just, I've been, I've been on that a uh, lot of occasions and uh, it's just... Uh, okay, let's talk about that phenomenal record when you took 10 against Pakistan in February 1999. At that moment, when Venkat Lakshman caught Vaseem Akram to give you your 10th, were you exhilarated? Were you relieved? Or were you just too stunned to believe it? I think I was too stunned to believe it. Uh, if you if you have a look at the uh, video, uh, you know that expression was just dazed. I was dazed totally. And uh, the first thing that came to my mind was, you know, we had won the test match. And uh, and then you know when all my teammates came close to me, and then then I realized, you know, slowly started realizing that I had picked up all the ten wickets in an innings. Uh, obviously, before bowling the. Uh, bowling that over, I knew that if I pick up one, I'll get all ten. But it was just, you know, one of those days where probably we're destined to get all the wickets. I gather there was a sort of game of superstition that you and Sachin were playing with each other right through. Do you remember it? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, invariably, you know, you have all these superstitions going uh, in a match. You know, there are different times, different superstitions. You just catch on to it. And sometimes, you know, these superstitions work, so you just stick stick to it. Uh, Sachin you know, after lunch, uh, he just said, let me uh, give your sweater and the cap to the umpire. Let me change your luck. And uh, that particular over, I got uh, Afridi and Ijazam with two wickets in one over. And then, uh, you know, at some stage, it was not happening every over. He would just come up to me and say, this over, you, you'll get a wicket. Let me take your sweater and cap. So it was happening, and it, it went through uh, till, till I got my 10th wicket. So every time you took your cap and your... A sweater, you got a wicket. Oh, yeah. I got a wicket that over every time he did Are that. you, in fact, generally superstitious? I think all of us are. I mean, I don't know. I, at least cricketers are uh, superstitious. And uh, you generally, you know, on that particular day, uh, you just remember. Probably it just gives you a bit of confidence, you know, if you know that you're doing the same kind of things. It's not that, you know, I have the same breakfast or I do the same thing every day, but it's just that, you know, you catch on to something. And it gives, and you, a certain it gives you certain comfort and uh, you feel good about it and, you know, you perform better or it just now, helps a, your performance. There's a story in the papers that when you had nine wickets in hand and you were waiting for the tenth, Srinath came to bowl from the other side and Azhar, the captain, apparently said to him, aim at anything but the stumps. Is that true? Yes, I think, uh, I think Sri, Sri was instructed or, you know, I, I'm sure anybody at that stage would have done, the, uh, done that. But, uh, you know, uh, we, were, we had a lot of time to... Uh, uh, to get the last wicket, and uh, it would have been really embarrassing for me, you know, if Srinath had to do it again. <laughs> so when I uh, when I came on to bowl that over after Sri had literally, you know, tried his hardest not to get a wicket, uh, you know, to say, okay, I have to get a wicket this over, otherwise it's asking for too much. So in fact, the tenth was the most pressure ridden of the lot for you. <laughs> yes, obviously. I mean, uh, a lot of everyone, everyone was looking forward to that, and everybody, uh, even from the crowd, when I went in. Uh, uh, to third man, they kept saying, no, don't worry, don't worry, you'll get your 10th wicket. So, you know, that, that thought was always there at the back of my mind. In fact, in, I think, the time when Kapil was poised in 1994 to beat Richard Hadley's record, 
you have to do virtually the same thing in reverse. You have to bowl badly for two overs to give him a chance. Yes, he was uh, he was on uh, 430 wickets, and uh, at the I mean we had to get three more wickets to win the Test match coming in on the fourth day, and uh, I got two wickets very quickly, and there was a last man in, and uh, he had to get one wicket to equal the record. So Azhar came to me and said, uh, you know, you have to, uh, and obviously, you know, I would have done the same thing. I wanted uh, uh, Paji to get that uh, 431st wicket in Bangalore. So you bowled badly. I, I bowled, I tried my hardest. I was <laughs> aiming at the sixth stump and trying to bowl there. And uh, Kapil got the... Uh, this is last. wonderful. There's a lovely picture that emerges of players who are actually cooperating and helping each other achieve their records. Oh, yes. I think, you know, when you get so close and when you know that your teammate is on the verge of uh, uh, creating a record, obviously you help each other. That's what uh, cricket is all about. Let's go back to the very beginning of the story of Anil Kumbhi. You only really seriously found yourself involved in cricket when you got chosen for the under-15 side for Karnataka. And I gather B.S. Chandrasekhar became your coach. How much of your development do you owe to him? The first time ever I saw B.S. Chandrasekhar from up close and, uh, and he was the coach for a one-month period in an under-15 camp. And, you know, the stories that we had heard, there was not much of television. And, uh, I mean, you know, you have these, when you're young, you hear stories about how these bowlers bowl and how it goes. So the only story that I had heard of uh, B.S. Chandrasekhar was that he would bowl a ball and it would pitch, spin like this, again pitch and come in. So, I mean, these kind of stories when we were young, we, uh, this was the story I had heard. And I actually got, I was fortunate enough to see him so close. And he, he helped me in uh, changing my run-up. And, and the first thing he told me, and even now he tells me, is that don't worry you about your spin or about anything else. Uh, you you just stick to your uh, strengths, which is your accuracy and the bounce you get, and don't worry about bowling leg spin, genuine leg spin. But although all the, all the BS Chandrasekhar actually shaped your spin, it was in fact your brother Dinesh who, when you were a teenager, advised you to give up medium pace bowling, which is what you did, and take to spinning. Do you remember why he gave you that advice? I think uh, one of the reasons uh, was that you know my uh, I was I was called for checking in a, <laughs> in, a in a school game, and uh, and then he came up to me and said uh, you know I think you should start bowling leg break because there's hardly any leg leg spin bowlers playing for Karnataka in the junior level or even at the senior level. So just try your luck. It might uh, I mean it might help you. And the first time I. I bowled. The only thing I knew was to bowl the other other way around, and I didn't have a formal coaching or anything like that. So, the, after a couple of months, I was uh, playing for Karnataka in the under 15. So since then, I just stuck to bowling leg break. Now you made your debut in first class cricket on the same day in the same game as Srinath playing for Karnataka against Hyderabad. Do you remember how that match went? Oh yes, uh, but we had. I mean, both our debuts were. Uh, uh, I mean, they're totally different, you know. He, he got a hat-trick in the first innings, and he was on a hat-trick even in the second innings. He missed his hat-trick. And then I got a king pair. So both of us will surely remember our debuts. He'll remember mine, and I'll definitely remember his. I was, out, I was out first ball in both the innings. You played for India when you were still in your university. And on your third one day, you went on, in fact, to get the man of the match. That was quite a dream start, wasn't it? It came as a surprise to me that I was chosen the man of the match uh, by Jeffrey Boycott. He was I mean, you the genuinely actor. weren't expecting it at all? Uh, no, not at all, because usually, uh, you know, it was a high-scoring game, and it was about, I think we were chasing something like 260 or something, and 250 or something like that in 55 overs. And I remember Sanjay Manjreka getting 80-odd in that game. So I was just thinking that, you know, I'm sure. And I had picked up only two wickets. So you had already given your vote to Sanjay? Yes, I would have, yeah. And, uh, and, you know, when Jeffrey Boycott announced that I was the man of the match, it came as a surprise. <laughs> you, of course, had your fair share of ups and downs. I mean, shortly after you made your debut for India, you got dropped for about a year and a bit. Then you were rested in 97 and then again dropped in 99. When a player gets dropped, is it a very difficult thing to have to live with? Uh, I think when I was uh, dropped the first time, uh, after my England tour, and we came back and played three one days against Sri Lanka, uh, I was dropped for a, for one year, one and a half years. Actually, that I mean, looking back, I don't regret it because 
you know, I, that gave me enough time to finish my studies and also, and also know what international cricket is all about. I mean, I had played international cricket and coming back I knew what my limitations were and I had to work on a lot of things. Do you mean to say that if you could so, relive your life, you'd drop yourself again? <laughs> Not really. I think that, that period really gave me a lot of... Uh, I mean, it was disappointing that, you know, we're out of the team. But I've never looked back... I mean, if, if I'm dropped, I never think that, you know, I'm being dropped or whatever. But what about last year? You just made cricketing history. You'd equaled the record and taken 10 wickets. And then suddenly, within a couple of months, you got dropped. That must have hurt and angered you. Boy. Yeah, it does. I mean, I, I missed uh, a tour. Uh, yeah. to, so, so it was... I think, you know, all these ups and downs do come uh, in one's life. And I've always believe that you know at no matter how how uh, uh, how your cricket is going through or whatever is happening i think i usually take success and failure in the same uh, way and then just ignore that and try and work harder to uh, so you keep your emotions back. in control no matter what happens uh, i think that's that's the way i i am and uh, you know i usually uh, keep it that way so would i be right in saying keeping emotions in check and a lot of determination to make sure that you make good again. Are those the two secrets of your success? I think you can say that. And obviously, you know, that determination and uh, that, that's always been there. And, uh, and you know, whenever... I've, I've always loved challenges. You know, when there's a challenge to perform and where there's a... I, do, I don't think pressure as, as a negative thing. And I've always thought that pressure is positive. And I've converted those into positive thoughts, saying, I have to do well. And if I do well under these kind of circumstances, then obviously that, uh, you know, that uh, whatever you, achievement is far greater than doing something when you're not under pressure. And let's take a break. I want to come back in part two and talk about your bowling and also talk a little bit about you personally. We'll be back in just a couple of moments. Stay with us. Welcome back. My guest is Anil Kumble. Anil, they call you Jumbo. Why? Looking at your incredible height, you're more of a giraffe than an elephant. Uh, actually, Jumbo is, uh, was coined by uh, Sidhu. Uh, it's not with regard to an elephant. Uh, it's more to do with uh, Jumbo Jet. And, uh, you know, we were playing the Irani Trophy match in 1992 when I was uh, trying, to, trying to make a comeback. And I got 13 wickets in that match. And there were a couple of spots from where it was really, you know, going off and the pace with uh, which I bowled. And Sidhu was at mid-on and uh, shouting, come on, Jumbo, come on, Jumbo. So it, it just got stuck. The other one they call you is Miser because you give away so few runs. Do you prefer that one? Yeah, I think, you know, if uh, probably... I haven't, I haven't heard people calling me Miser, but it's just that, you know, they attach that name with, uh, with me uh, because of the uh, number of runs that I give. So. Let's talk a little about your bowling. It's not conventional spin bowling, and yet you clearly fool the bats for most of the time. How would you describe your bowling action? Uh, you know, that when I started bowling, uh, I bowled medium pace. So that uh, kind of style has remained. And I never wanted to change. Uh, although, you know, when I was out of the team uh, a couple of times, some of the thoughts, negative thoughts, do creep in and say, no, I think I need to you know, start bowling the orthodox leg break, try and uh, change my action, bowl a bit slower, run in slower, don't jump, do this, do that. But, but you know, I just wanted to uh, stick to my basic action because that's where I've been successful. I mean, I just go with a feeling I'm a bowler. I've got a few variations and I've got a few strengths. I just bowl to my limitations and try and get the maximum out of, uh, out of myself. That, that's perfectly true. But as Harsha Bogle in a tribute to you once said, because yours is an unorthodox form of spin, perhaps you haven't got the recognition you deserve. Do you think sometimes commentators and critics haven't fully appreciated you? Uh, I, I'm not really uh, too uh, concerned about the recognition which, uh, which you know, people... It, it sometimes upsets you that they sometimes take you up there. And suddenly the next day, if you don't get wickets, you're just at the rock bottom. Uh, but I think what matters to me the most is the recognition my teammates give me, which I think I have. That's, that's the ultimate thing. I mean, if within a team, they know that you're a good bowler and you can achieve this, you're expected of this, and if you're delivering the goods to the team, 
I think that's the most. So important. you're able to put a steel wall between yourself and the outside commentators and critics. Uh, yes, but sometimes you know it does affect you at times. But uh, I think you just have to generally get on with uh, uh, with life and think uh, in a rational way. Rather now, of course, you're not just a bowler. In fact, you have six first-class centuries to your credit, and yet, surprisingly, in tests and one days, you've never been able to do it. Do you think it's the pressure of a bowler that stops you, or is it just lack of opportunity? Uh, not really. I think I've got a few opportunities which uh, which haven't uh, uh, you know uh, I haven't done justice to. Is it luck? Not really. I I can't blame really luck on that part because I don't think I've really worked uh, hard enough on my batting the way I do on my bowling. Probably because of the pressures that I have to perform as a bowler, and uh, I mean that is one of my ambitions. I've come close to uh, getting a Test hundred twice. And both the times I got run out because I, the first time I was running out, I was the last man out. I didn't have a, uh, a partner at the other end. And uh, and the second time I was run out uh, by the third umpire, which I don't want to say much about. Uh, but I came very close to a test hundred. I'm really uh, keen on getting that uh, record, uh, you know, a bit different. How long do you give yourself before you can do it? One year. W literally. Yes. So it's I a think target. I can do I think I think I can. I have the uh, capability. I've done that in the first class level at a consistent, you know, very consistently, and I have a good uh, first class record. Uh, I'd like to do that, but hopefully get a few more runs in one day. Have you well. made up your mind which particular side you're going to do it against? I think if if it comes against the best side, nothing like it. So you know, I've, I've got uh, 88 against South Africa. That's my highest test score, which is which has one of the best uh, bowling attacks in inter international cricket. So I know I can bat. It's just that, you know, I need to uh, probably work harder at it. Well, good luck for that one. Let's talk a little about the personal side. People say you're shy. They say you're serious. They say you're very quiet. Is that really so? Yeah, I like, I like to be, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quiet, very reserved. Uh, actually, you know, I feel uh, comfortable with with crowd and with all that, only with a cricket ball in hand. I mean, if you if you take me out from the stadium and put 100, 200 people, and if you put me in the middle, I feel really uncomfortable. Probably, you know, I'd, I'd like uh, a very quiet place and uh, just just do things in my own uh, pace and in my own style. So, you know, if I'm only comfortable uh, with crowd and all these surroundings only when I have a cricket ball in it. And is it also true that you don't like expressing your emotions openly, that you keep them under a stiff upper lip? I think I've always uh, done that. I mean, whatever uh, things I have in mind, I've kept it to myself and uh, tried and analyzed my own, in my own way what was right, what was wrong, and uh, how to go about things. Uh, but there, have been, uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, friends and my wife who I talk to and you know, obviously, you have to get something out of, you know, try and keep uh, bouncing back. I think sometimes I, I use but my But you wife. sound as if you have to push yourself to talk about yourself. Uh, sometimes, yes. But I think, uh, I think my wife has uh, borne the brunt of, uh, brunt of it sometimes. She's I, found the key to open you up, has she? Yes, she has. And I think, I think sometimes I use her as a punching bag, which is not right. I mean, <laughs> you know, sometimes you let it out and... Uh, and even even from the uh, from the cricket field, you know, you have certain things in your mind. Uh, and I talk to her. Tell me about your wife. You've been married now a year. How did you meet Chetna, and where? Uh, we met at a common friend's place, and that was uh, that was the time I met her, and uh, we got to know each other well. I think we know uh, each other enough, and I at least I I know her enough to uh, spend the rest of my life with her. So was it love at first sight or...? Yes, sort of, yes. She bowled you over. <laughs> yes. It's not just, of course, your wife Chetna that you've allowed yourself to become close to. You've also done a lot of work with disabled people and you've responded to them with great alacrity and warmth. Is that also another way of channelizing your emotions and feelings? Oh, yes. Uh, I've always, uh, you know, felt, uh, but felt very strongly uh, with regard to disabled children and... Uh, and even with nature. I mean, I felt really strongly with those regards. And in whatever way I've been able to support 
uh, I think the only way that I've been able to support them is not by giving them too much. I mean, I haven't been able to give them uh, time that I would love to, but it's just that you know I've only given them my name and uh, and and I've just supported them in whatever way I can at this point of time. But there I'm was not. a 19 year old called Vedan who sadly died, but you became quite close to him at one point in time. Oh yes, uh, I mean you know I I met him in uh, Bangalore on a wheelchair and. Uh, he, he was not really uh, looking well and his mom uh, you know said the only time that he smiles is when he is watching cricket and he, when he's watching you and I thought to myself I mean if I can put a smile in his face every day he watches me and he didn't and even his mother knew and I knew that he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't survive for long so I thought you know maybe whatever I can do to uh, to the foundation. It's called Shakti Foundation. It's in Madras. And uh, I did support them, uh, I mean, by attending the function and trying to ri raise funds. And, and sadly, uh, he passed away. And he used to write to me, giving me a lot of, when I was dropped from the team in 97, he used to write to me uh, saying, don't, don't worry, cheer up. I mean, coming from him really gave me a lot of strength. So in fact, it was a relationship that gave you strength as much as you gave him strength. Oh yes, I think uh, it was mutual and uh, and you know I haven't been able to uh, uh, do much for the foundation but I think with uh, with the world wide web coming in uh, hopefully I've uh, tried I'll try and you know contribute a little bit more on that effort. You have a good four five six years ahead but when you stop being a cricketer have you thought about the future what would you like to do? I haven't thought about it uh, when I stopped playing cricket, but I think, I think I've just, uh, I mean, last two three years I've just wanted to start something which goes alongside with cricket, and uh, we have a, I'm, I'm a partner in one of the companies which, uh, which does cricket software, and my brother uh, is one of the partners, and he looks after the uh, business, so we have that, and I have started a sports promotion. Uh, company after my 10 wicket haul so we are looking at various options so from the playing of cricket you move perhaps to the business of cricket yes I think but but at the end of it it has to be cricket I mean I'll definitely be involved uh, with cricket in some way or the other and there'll be millions on it who'll say may you be involved for a very very long time thank you very much for a wonderful interview thank you thank you, thank you.